Hi everyone, and welcome to the intensive on intonation. Intonation is how we color and highlight and emphasize words in our speech. This intensive is really for anybody who wants to learn how to get more in touch with the way that they're inflecting and communicating their thoughts and feelings through the way that they speak. This is very, very useful, especially in the case of voice feminization because typically speaking, the monotone voice tends to be perceived as more masculine. Um, and so if you're trying to move away from that, then working on your intonation will definitely help for your overall communication pattern to be perceived as being more in the feminine range. So let's get started together. I'm going to go ahead and just talk a little bit about what intonation is, just to give a little bit of background on it as we build into doing some work together. So like I said, when we talk about intonation, it's the stress or emphasis that we give to specific words or phrases to get a certain meaning across to the listener. Try this with me. Say the sentence, where were you last night, with the most unemphasized, most monotone, most flat way possible. It's a little bit hard, especially when you're thinking about it, but just try. Where were you last night? Pretty boring and dull, right? Now, let's try saying it a different way, and we're going to really put our emphasis on the word where. Where, where were you last night? How did that sound to you? How about this one? Where were you last night? Or this one. Where, where were you last night? You see how in the emphasis it kind of changes like what I'm really asking. Like, where were you last night? I really want to know where you were versus where were you last night is almost saying like, I know where you were. You don't really need to tell me. So that's, that's just a little snippet of what intonation is. And it might sound like, oh, this is a no brainer, but it can be a real challenge sometimes. What I do want to highlight is that each time you emphasize a different word with a different vocal trait, you really are communicating truly what you're feeling, right? It's not just the words we say, but how you say it. So that's what intonation does to our speech patterns. So let's try this phrase, and I want you to kind of use this as a mantra in your vocal journey, okay? The phrase is, I'm awakening my authentic voice. So let's try to say that a couple of different ways. Okay, so first we're going to put the emphasis on the word I'm. I'm awakening my authentic voice. Let's say it with emphasis on awakening. I'm awakening my authentic voice. Let's say it with the emphasis on the word voice. I'm awakening my authentic voice. So using how fast or slow you talk, your pauses, the inflection up or down, even a little bit of loudness, although to be very clear, intonation is not how loud you speak. Uh, these are different parameters that we can kind of bring into color and highlight and really bring some juicy character to our speech, okay? So we're going to read a couple of quotes together. Quotes are really great because reading a quote quietly to yourself, you can sort of think about what that person was trying to convey and then from there you can try to bring that message to life with your voice. So for example, if you obey all the rules, you miss all the fun. Now let's try to say it with even more inflection and intonation. If you obey all the rules, you miss all the fun. You give it a shot. How about this one? Courage is like a muscle, we strengthen it by use. Courage is like a muscle. We strengthen it by use. Really using these different tools, it can really bring some power into our speech, okay? How about this one? It's never too late to be who you might have been. You try that one. Say it the way you wanna say it. It's never too late to be who you might have been. Okay. 
as you start to pay attention, you can get really into uh, doing dialogues, maybe reading a script with a communication partner um, from your favorite movie, to start practicing intonation. The funny thing about intonation is the really structured work is a bit challenging because it always feels like you're kind of putting something on. Um, it does take practice and the practice trickles into your everyday speech, but I, this is one where I really encourage you right away to get out there and start listening to yourself in the way that you're speaking and then bringing these strategies into your everyday speech. So now that we've kind of glossed over intonation, let's do some really targeted practice. We're going to say some statements with a falling intonation, okay? And these are straight statements that have one stress. And I'm going to demonstrate where we're going by bringing my hand down or bringing my hand up. So right now we're going to go down. I know I know, I see, she works, we laughed, it stopped. Now we're going to go up. She did it. We found it. She has done it. We have found it. Now with two stresses. We're going to go inflecting down. People work. Birds fly. Tom is reading. Mary is sleeping. Now let's inflect up on the two stresses. Peter is a doctor. Mary is a teacher. The sun is a star. Penguins are birds. We're going to go into asking questions with a falling intonation, okay? What is his name? Where does she live? Where did you call him? Why are you late? What is your name? Where are you from? Now let's ask questions with a rising intonation. Where have you been? Where are your friends? When will she return? When did it happen? Let's make some statements that are very friendly and it's going to be with a rising intonation. What's your name? Where do you live? What are you reading? When is your birthday? How about some general questions with a falling intonation? Do you visit them often? Have you, have you seen my keys? You ready to start? Have you read this book? So you can hear with the rise and the fall, it's totally, it's communicating a totally different message. Um, and the other thing I do want to mention is with the rising and the falling intonation, some of it does have an impact on your pitch. So if you are also doing some pitch work, it's good to practice this in the extreme. There's a really great website that I like to use when I do these exercises. It's called usefulenglish.ru. And if you go to that website and you click on the, on the left side of the screen, all the way at the bottom, practice materials for pronunciation, click on practice for intonation and rhythm, and that's where I'm getting a lot of my materials from. I really like that website. It's got tons and tons of phrases and sentences for you to really dig in and get really comfortable with working on your intonation. Okay. Another thing I want to say about intonation is if you are multilingual or bilingual or bicultural growing up hearing another language, it may impact the way that your English articulation and English intonation is presented. So that's something else to think about if you're a multilingual, multicultural, multi, that's it right, multilingual, multicultural person, then you may have to also deal with that a little bit. If, if your language is very tonal or if it's a very flat language, it might trickle in. So it's just something, something to think about and it's really just a difference in our speech patterns. But if you're going to dive in and you're going to do the work, I want to bring that up so that you can be aware of it and be thinking about it, okay?
So let's keep working through this hierarchy, okay? In the case of intonation, we would start with like these short little statements or questions like, she knows, she knows, he's there, he's there. And then we'll build into longer sentences and then eventually into monologues or short dialogues with the communication partner. So let's go back to the beginning and start to build now that we've kind of established a foundation of what intonation is, how it sounds, and what it does to our speech, okay? So let's go through this together. And just work with me as we are going to contrast the down intonation and the up intonation. She did it. She did it. We found it. We found it. She has done it. She has done it. We have found it. We have found it. Moving into statements with two stresses. Max is at home. Max is at home. Tanya is at school. Tanya is at school. Rome is, Rome is in Italy. Rome is in Italy. She likes tea. She likes tea. Let's build into three stresses. Betty lives in London. Betty lives in London. Victor works at a bank. Victor works at a bank. I haven't read this book. I haven't read this book. And into four stresses. She wants to buy a new car. She wants to buy a new car. He wrote the letters very quickly. He wrote the letters very quickly. And now five stresses. Alex wrote the letters very quickly. Alex wrote the letters very quickly. Myra wants to buy a new car. Myra wants to buy a new car. Questions with a falling intonation. When did it happen? What are you doing? Where are you going? Why are you laughing? Questions with a rising intonation. Where is it? What are they? Where were you? That one sounds kind of funny. How old are you? Of course, when you do these exercises, they can be a little bit funny because some of the sentences, the inflection doesn't actually match what it says. This is just a part of it, and so we're going to keep moving forward, okay? Friendly and polite statements and phrases with a rising intonation. How much is this bag, please? When is the next train, please? Where is the nearest park, please? Some questions with a rising intonation. Does she work? Will they come? Do you know him? How do you like it? Have you read it? Making a request with a rising intonation. Could you give me a pen, please? Could you open the window, please? Would you mind helping me? Questions that have a rising and falling intonation. Do you want coffee or tea? Does he speak English or German? Are you studying English or French? Does he play football or basketball? Is she young or old? Are they happy or angry? More questions with a rising and falling intonation. It's a beautiful town, isn't it? She knows him, doesn't she? Nice weather, isn't it? You live here, don't you? It's a nice day, isn't it? Requests with a rising intonation. Come in, please. Come here, please. Sit down, please. Close the window, please. 
please come in. So moving through statements like this is really helpful in training the down and up inflection and tuning you in. So part of our work with intonation involves finding dialogues and monologues that are available online um, and just reading through them as you're trying to sort of figure out how to bring in all these different vocal characteristics, okay? So for example, on this website, aceyouraudition.com, there's lots of free monologues and so I've picked one. And I'm going to just read a little bit of it to you and just kind of demonstrate how you can play around, okay? So it says, I'm thrilled you all could make it tonight, gentlemen. I know I ask a lot of you, but I hope you all realize I notice everything. Every tiny smile, every command obeyed, every sacrifice given. You're my people, aren't you? And tonight you're going to prove it. Now I want you all to pick up your instruments and line up in. You, stand up straight, please. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just to give you an idea of just finding these things and just playing around with them and thinking about how other people feel in these dialogues and monologues. If, you know, if you're doing a monologue, it's just you sort of figuring it out or get a communication partner and, you know, just do intonation work with them back and forth using different dialogues. Because a lot of times, even if you were working one-on-one -on -one with somebody on your voice or doing a webinar series, for example, everything kind of starts to become happy and generic statements, but these scripts kind of help us get into more realistic life conversations until you feel ready to, you know, pick up the phone and make phone calls or, you know, just take this practice of intonation and inflection into different areas of your life. So I hope that you found this content to be useful and helpful and to give a little bit more insight and strategies and tips on how to improve your intonation and inflection. Google some word lists online, get some phrases, your favorite quotes, poetry, movie scripts, and read through some dialogues with a communication partner or work through some monologues by yourself. Practice and consistency are going to help you to really bring intonation and inflection into your everyday speech and will eventually generalize in such a way where you don't always have to overthink it. And as always, if you have questions, thoughts, or feedback, please email me or find me on social media. I would love to answer any questions that you have. We do have a Facebook group that if you want to only join that and hop on with live clinicians and you know, ask questions and gain feedback from actual voice therapists and also our little community that we're building, please let me know and I'd love to get you in there. Thanks so much and I'll see you soon.